Well, you're absolutely right to say that our unit of concern is not any particular country, but it is the entire world. Um, that's true. But we don't have to immunize 16 billion people. Based upon the fact that this is a virus with a reproduction number of 2.5, we would, and with vaccines of efficacy of around 90%, we can calculate that we would need to vaccinate about two thirds of the population in order to achieve that magical uh, um, threshold of herd immunity. So that's about four and a half, five billion people on the planet. Now that's still a massive challenge. Um, it's never been done before in the space of time that we need to do it. But that's the goal, about two thirds of the population. Right now, we don't have enough vaccine, um, but I know that there are other vaccines that are being produced in expectation of phase three clinical trial results. Johnson & Johnson is an example, for, exa uh, for example. And that means that I think by the middle of next year, we will be at a position with enough results and enough vaccine manufactured and procured to be able to start thinking about approaching that two thirds level. I think the goal is, that we're, we're using 2021 to get to that herd immunity level so that when we go into the winter of next year, we will have a protected population. Very clear uh, uh, outline there. Thank you, Richard. Um, I just want to close out the conversation uh, with a, a fairly straightforward question around how we should think about the AstraZeneca vaccine compared to Moderna, Pfizer, BioNTech. The market is very firmly fixated on the efficacy rate, but as I understand, that is only part of the equation when it comes to how useful these vaccines can be. So help us understand, articulate for us how to compare these three different vaccines that we now have phase three results for. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because our, our concern is immunizing the world, because even if we immunize one country, the, the threat then is that you reintroduce the virus from another country that is not protected. So you've really got to immunize the world. That means that you need a vaccine that can get particularly to low and middle income countries where the cold chain is more challenging. So for a vaccine that requires minus 70 deep freezing, that is not practicable if you're going out into many low middle income country settings. This is where the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine has a distinct comparative advantage. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is the vaccine right now that is going to be able to immunize the planet more effectively, more rapidly than any other vaccine we have. So that's why I think we, over the next few weeks, we need to be looking uh, for the approval, the emergency authorization of this vaccine, and then we need to get um, manufacturing scaled up to immunize the world.